Let's consider one of the first categories of disorders that you need to be familiar with. That would be psychotic disorders. Now, what does it mean if someone, uh, or you're describing someone, maybe a friend or someone that you know, and you might say that they're psychotic, okay? What we know about psychotic behavior is that this individual is not experiencing the same reality as you are, meaning this is really a state which a person has, a, you know, a different perception um, or, again, a different understanding of reality than those around them. Schizophrenia happens to be one of the most common types of psychotic disorders. Schizo does not mean multiple personality disorder. Schizo means that this person is out of touch with reality. If you've ever seen the movie A Beautiful Mind with Russell Crowe, this is based on a true story about a famous doctor uh, and brilliant doctor, John Nash. Okay. Also, if you've seen the movie The Soloist, this is based on a true story. I've also put in your blackboard for you guys to take a look at. Uh, it's an interview with the uh, original individuals that The Soloist is, uh, is written about, okay, or is, the, is, is covering. Moving on. So uh, what are the symptoms of somebody that suffers with schizophrenia? Well, before we dive into the symptoms, I'll just let you know about 1% of the general population suffer with schizophrenia. And um, the most, the onset of schizophrenia is usually late adolescence, around 18, and early adulthood. So that's where we see the onset of this particular uh, disorder. And the first couple of uh, symptoms you see on the screen um, would be considered positive symptoms, and they are delusions, which are false beliefs, uh, and the individual or the person insists that they're true. Let me give you an example. Again, this is a false belief. If uh, they believe um, uh, that uh, they can channel uh, Michael Jackson, okay? Um, that could be, again, considered a delusion, okay? Another symptom would be hallucinations. That would be those imaginary sensations. The most common type of hallucination would be auditory hallucinations, okay? And um, the reason why they're referred to as positive symptoms because uh, something's being added to the person's experience. Um, and that's why they're considered positive symptoms. If you're curious about auditory hallucinations, you can check out this link and um, you can, the web link helps you to experience an auditory hallucination if uh, you're unsure what exactly that is, okay? Now, additional symptoms uh, would include the emotional disturbance, such as a flat affect. A flat affect is considered to be a negative symptom because negative meaning this, this individual suffering with the schizophrenia with a flat affect, they lack, okay, or they're missing that emotional responsiveness. Oftentimes, this flat affect includes kind of a frozen blank expression that the person could have. But on the flip side, if they don't suffer with flat affect, they could also suffer with a pretty bizarre, inappropriate emotional reactions. Um, in, symptoms also include a, a verbal disturbance. Um, oftentimes in patients with schizophrenia, they could, uh, their speech is really kind of garbled, meaning they may be talking to you and words are coming out of their mouth, but they really don't make any sense, okay? There's also 
uh, if they suffer with a type of paranoid schizophrenia, they, they may speak in neologisms, which are made up words. Additional symptoms include uh, motor disturbance, meaning they can uh, have unusual uh, psychomotor disturbance. Uh, they, have, they engage in stupors, like a waxy position or posture that they will stay in. Uh, they can walk unusual, unusually, or they'll have an unusual um, gait. The most common uh, type or the type of schizophrenia that you see the most motor disturbance with is a catatonic schizophrenia. And lastly, they can have um, disorientation where they're severely confused uh, about, you know, place and time. Okay. I was, I was speaking on the uh, previous slide about catatonic schizophrenia or paranoid schizophrenia. These are two of the most common types of schizophrenia. Someone with a paranoid type of schizophrenia, they really have delusions that where they have a preoccupation of persecution. Somebody's after them. People are following them. Somebody could be uh, bugging their phone calls or their house. Uh, so they're always afraid someone's after them. The second type of uh, schizophrenia is the catatonic type. This is where they have the severe motor disturbance. And then um, that also includes a mutism where they will not speak or the odd posturing. The third type of schizophrenia would be a disorganized type where they have severely disorganized behavior and thinking. And then lastly, the, the last category is an undifferentiated type. And this is when they do not, uh, they do not meet the features specific for the diagnosis of paranoid, catatonic, or disorganized. So it's kind of like a catch-all category. Now you may be wondering what on earth causes this? Uh, it, again, the onset tends to be late adolescence, early adulthood. Uh, you know, how is it that a person can have, a, you know, a relatively normal life growing up and then all of a sudden they experience these symptoms like hallucinations and delusions? The most common theory about uh, causes of schizophrenia is a disturbance in uh, the brain's biochemistry system, specifically neurotransmitters like dopamine that we know are involved in emotions and then also muscle movements. The theory is that dopamine could be overactive in the brains of individuals with schizophrenia. And then also glutamate seems to be a culprit in the brain's uh, chemical system too. If you remember, glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter, and the theory is that um, the glutamate is not active enough uh, in the brain of a schizophrenic. There are also other biochemical or biophysiological explanations, like it's been linked to uh, the influenza virus. Uh, there's theories about pre- and postnatal experiences. There's a uh, positive correlation with the paternal age of the, uh, the father, the biological father uh, in patients with schizophrenia. Another important theory is about uh, abnormal brain structures. And on the previous, uh, on the next couple of slides, I show you like specifically uh, abnormal structures in CT scans, uh, also in the ventricles of the brain uh, as well, and activity in the brain. Uh, the last cause that you'll see on this slide would be links to untreated STDs and then exposure to taxoplasmosis. Okay, so um, abnormal brain structures. As you see on this slide, 
Uh, this is a brain of a schizophrenic. If you notice how large these ventricles are right here compared to uh, an individual that does not exhibit, exhibit the symptoms of schizophrenia, they have, say, normal ventricles within the brain. So brain structure plays a role in this a disorder. Also, we see changes in um, the rate of uh, gray matter or the loss of gray matter. It is normal for uh, the mat uh, a maturing brain to, uh, to, to lose gray matter. But if you see on the slide in front of you, in the brains of schizophrenics, the rate of uh, loss of gray, mat gray matter is significant more compared to, say, a, a normal adolescent brain. And this is a CT scan. Um, you should see on a, a, a normal CAT scan that an individual's uh, uh, brain cells are tight, uh, tight together. Whereas in this brain, and I'm using my yellow highlighter here, you see these significant crevices uh, in this spacing here. Uh, this is the brain of a schizophrenic right here. They have a, a larger again um, spaces within the, the the neurons in their brain and they believe that plays a significant role um, one of the last slides i'll mention about schizophrenia is the role of genetics we know that in um, identical twins if one identical twin develops schizophrenia there's a 48% uh, uh, likelihood or risk factor of the other identical twin developing schizophrenia. But um, if this is not the same for, say, paternal twins, it goes down to only a 17% risk factor. Okay, so this concludes our discussion today on schizophrenia. Thanks for uh, watching this uh, slide presentation. You guys have a great day.